proper nail care is important for the health and mobility of all dogs, but I know it can be a source of anxiety for both dogs and their people. But in this episode of the Busby Dog Podcast, I want to share with you my secret family recipe for safely and painlessly trimming your dog's nails. And I don't want this to be a secret. I want your family to love nail trimming as much as I do. So first, like all recipes have, we're gonna begin with preparation time, and I'm giving it 15 minutes. And you might say, why do I need 15 minutes preparation time? I just have to find my nail trimmers. But really, I want you to think about this a whole different way. If your dog is not particularly cooperative about having his or her nails trimmed, remember the old adage, a tired dog is a good dog. Grab a leash and take your four-legged pal for a spin. Draining excess energy will take the edge off and help the procedure go more smoothly. What we don't want to do is whip out the nail trimmers and jump right in to do a nail trim on a dog, especially one who's nervous or hyperactive. We want to set the stage for the right mindset for all involved. Number two, the necessary tools. A well-designed nail clipper is essential. I recommend using a large um, nail clipper that resembles a mini pruning shear. I never use the guillotine style nail trimmer because they're designed for a one snip fits all style nail trim, which frankly is suboptimal both in terms of efficacy, you don't really have the ability to control what you're trimming as much, and, and safety. I think this can lead to a false sense of security, especially if it has the nail guard on it because all dogs are different. And it's probably wise to also have a bottle of styptic powder on hand, um, especially early on. Certainly with vigilance and good observational skills, you shouldn't need it. But if you're new, I think it's wise to have um, some sort of a, a clotting skip, styptic powder on hand just as a precaution. And Murphy's Law, if you have it, you won't need it. So that's, that's a good rule of thumb. As to be expected with any new chef, there may be some boo-boos along the way on a variety of fronts. You know, how, this, how it feels to you, how it feels to the dog, maybe a little uh, need for styptic powder. But I promise you, practice makes perfect. This is an art form that you can master and even enjoy. All right, let's jump into the instructions. Number one, your nail trimming team. No brilliant chef works alone. For the most comfortable position, you need to find that comfortable position where your dog feels relaxed and is able to be trusting and feel secure so you can work on the paws. So for a big dog, this may mean that he's lying on his side. For a little dog, this may mean having an assistant snuggle the dog against the human's, uh, you know, another human's chest. Another idea would be having the dog recline in an armchair beside you with his legs kind of sticking out and you can reach over and trim the nails or even lying in someone's lap. Whatever the position you find that works, it's unlikely that the dog's gonna be 100% perfectly cooperative. I remember doing a nail trimming video once with a really, really good dog, and I actually got feedback. Somebody emailed and said, was that dog anesthetized for the nail trim because he was perfect? That's the goal. We wanna build that level, and it's possible. Build that level of trust. Dogs read us like a book where we're comfortable, we're confident, the dog's relaxed. That's where this is headed. So it's unlikely because they're not anesthetized that there may be some motion in the process. So we wanna keep a position that makes the dog visibly comfortable and is not fear inducing. So even when there's motion, we can just work through that. Above all, you need to keep this experience positive because you will ideally repeat it routinely. All right, next, let's talk about getting into position. So I'm talking about the actual paw. You're gonna gently hold and support each paw as you work on the nails. Dogs don't like to feel vulnerable. Gently, yet confidently, take the lead in the situation and this will inspire your dog to comply. All right, some food for thought. Sometimes a dog will pull back the leg that you're trying to trim, so a foreleg or a hind limb while you're working. If the person who's helping you um, to, to hold and support the dog 
grabs that leg, and I've seen this time and time again, it's like the natural reflex. They grab the leg and put it in a death grip. I guarantee you that dog's gonna fight all the more. You've just given them a, a challenge to duel. So what we're gonna do here is we wanna keep things pleasant. You wanna control the leg, but not with brute force ever, ever, ever. We're gonna do mind over matter here. So we wanna trim the nails, ideally on a stationary target. I think we're all in agreement on that. And we don't want him jerking his leg back and forth because he can actually injure himself. So this is where understanding the dog's anatomy will come in handy. As I said, I never recommend using brute force and trying to tackle the dog and get the job done. I recommend finesse. So when working with the forelimb, simply take the palm of your hand and by extending the leg and locking out the elbow, so I've got the palm of my hand right behind the dog's elbow, he can't jerk that leg back and forth. So I'm actually holding nothing. I'm just creating kind of a mechanical block behind that elbow and giving him the suggestion that he would like to extend that leg. Now, for the for, for podcast viewers, let me just be clear that I've extended that forelimb. I'm at the bony protuberance of the elbow called the olecranon, and I've pressed that front leg forward toward the head. Now, on the hind leg, the same principle can apply. You can take the hind leg, it bends forward at the knee, and so we can take the palm of our hand and we can gently push the leg back at the knee. And so my hand's not wrapped around the leg at all. I'm not grasping anything, but I've got my hand in front of the stifle or the dog's knee, and that's locked out now in extension. It doesn't hurt him at all. I've just taken that joint and said, you're gonna be an extension. And he's perfect. I've got a dog sitting next to me here in our little podcasting studio on my couch, and he's perfectly happy. But if he wants to pull this leg back, he's gonna meet with some resistance, and it's gonna be a better idea for him just to keep it extended. So this is a great way to keep it safe for the dog. He's not jerking his leg back and forth. It's a less is more approach. That's certainly often best in veterinary medicine. So we've used a biomechanical advantage with another hand just to support the legs and, and that's a way that you can trim all four. I'll also say that if the dog's lying on his side, it's easier to trim the down legs, the ones that are closest to the ground than the up legs, because there's some inherent friction of those legs with the ground and they're not as easy for the dog to move around. So I often start with those legs so that the dog can feel comfortable um, and, and kind of just get a good flow, a good trust right off the bat, start with the legs that are closest to the ground and say, you know, he, it's harder for him to move them, he's stiller, I'm, faster because it's easier when they're not moving and we get a good rhythm going as I proceed to the other three legs. All right, let's get cooking. Time to trim. Trimming the nails can be very intimidating, but this need not be the case. That's my message. When you give directions to a destination, you might include landmarks. For example, you might say, and you're gonna turn left at the big pink hotel. Similarly, when trimming the nails, there are landmarks you can watch for to make sure you get where you need to go without veering off course and having an accident. So our goal, our objective, is to trim the nail back as far as we can, as close to the quick as we can, without making the dog uncomfortable, certainly without hitting the quick, because the quick is that nerve and blood supply which run together, it's the live part of the nail, and we're gonna trim off that dead part of the nail just like our nail tissue that has no nerve and blood supply and is not painful to remove. The technique, all right, here's the secret family recipe. Traditional wisdom holds that we cut the nail at an angle which is almost parallel to the ground. So you've got the dog's nail, and where that surface of the nail would hit the ground, we, we just make a snip. And we just make one snip and move to the next nail. I think that's kind of the universally accepted traditional nail trim. But we're gonna spice up this recipe by casting tradition aside. Instead of making your cut horizontal, we're gonna make our cut very vertical. So if vertical, if, if a 90 degree perpendicular line was dropped, through the dog's paw to the ground, and you think about where the nails are interfacing with the ground, we're actually gonna come behind that line about 30 degrees. 
And I get that it's difficult to explain this via a podcast. So take a minute to visit our blog at toegrips.com. Our website is toegrips.com slash the Busby Bark. The hyphen Busby, B-U-Z-B-Y hyphen Bark. That's our blog. And I actually have several um, blogs on nail trimming with illustrations, pictures, and diagrams. Okay, so we're gonna take that cut 30 degrees or so past the vertical. And in this way, you're removing the extra nail that your dog would otherwise have to break over with every stride, this extra nail tissue, up higher than what's normally being cut off. But the reason that works is because it still avoids the quick, because the quick tends to run lower in the nails. So let's try to talk through this step by step. So first, you're gonna gently support that paw, hold the paw in your non-dominant hand. Okay, so that would be left for most of us. And you're gonna support each toe as you work. You'd be surprised how important this is. Um, we sell a product called Toe Grips and they're non-slip nail grips for senior dogs that slip on the floor. And it is such a huge difference in applying them when a person just tries to kind of ram them on to the end of a toe versus when they support the toe and, and push the toe grip onto the nail. This is really where this came to my attention is, is just how much dogs would react when they didn't have the support of each toe as, as we were working. Um, and I frequently get feedback from customers and this is something that we work through. So the same is true for nail trims. It comes back to that dog not wanting to be vulnerable. Supporting the toe, supporting the nail as you, you're actually supporting the toe which attaches by a bony structure to the nail, giving that support as you work and individually moving toenail to toenail as you go, digit to digit as you go, will actually make a big difference in how your dog feels about and cooperates with your nail trim. So you're gonna support the toe with your non-dominant hand because you need the nail trimmers to work in your dominant hand. You're gonna take the nail trimmers and you're gonna make that vertical cut. So I've got the dog's toenail here, the nail, and I'm going past perpendicular, about 30 degrees behind the perpendicular, and I'm cutting in this manner. And again, please go to our blog and check out the illustrations. For a light colored nail, you can visualize the quick. And if you're not sure, and you want even a little bit more clear definition on that quick, you can take a flashlight and, and shine it up through the nail. Did you ever do that when you were a kid, when you took a flashlight and shone it through your fingertip and saw the, the red in your own fingernail? It works the same for a dog's nail and you can visualize the quick, but for most of us, for those light colored nails, it's very obvious where the pink quick is. And so you can eyeball that first cut. You wanna stay far away from that quick. For a dark nail, you can't see the quick, but fear not. Start conservatively out near the tip and just begin to make multiple sliver cuts. Um, you just wanna, it's gonna, when you're done, it's the contrast to that one snip, that nail's done, next one, no, 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 when I'm done, there's like a floor full of little nail slivers all over the ground because in each nail, I'm making multiple cuts as I almost in a cross section march my way back towards the quick. But that allows for me to be looking for my landmarks, looking for my pink hotel so I don't have an accident. And I work back until I see what I call the pre-quick. So this is a key takeaway here. For a light colored nail, the pre-quick is like a pinkish beige color. And for a dark nail, the pre-quick is a dark black and reminds me of black licorice. And this pre-quick, and to be in full disclosure here, I, I made that word up. I don't know that that's out there in the literature, but what it tells me is I'm getting close to the quick and that's as far as I wanna go. Again, the quick is the blood and nerve supply. We can't get there. If we do, there's gonna be blood and there's gonna be a dog who's felt pain. We wanna avoid that at all cost. So we're looking for that pre-quick and when it becomes visible, I stop making any more cuts to remove length. And now I can just go to the sides and I can shave off with my handy dandy nail trimmers that allow me the luxury of being very specific about what I'm cutting, unlike the guillotine ones that remember we don't recommend. So now I'm on the sides of the nails, just kind of taking off the sharp points and sculpting and rounding the nail. This may sound like it would take you hours, but 
as I said, practice makes perfect. You can do all this in five minutes for the entire dog once you have a good grasp on the process and some practice under your belt. All right, so sculpting the edges of the nail, um, trimming, these shy, trimming the sides of the nail doesn't make the, the nail functionally shorter, so you can have that pre-quick exposed. You can be working around the sides of the nail and not affect the quick at all, not putting you at any risk for cutting it. All right, so here's the good news. If you've been looking for our, an artistic outlet lately, you don't need to sign up for a session at the Pottery Wheel or even visit the local Sip and Paint. There's plenty of room for artistry when trimming your dog's nails. I bet you didn't know that, but it's true. Okay, chef, so let's talk about one other topic and that is personal preference. I am sometimes amazed at how um, passionate people who cook feel about the difference between their gas stove versus their electric stove. I read on Facebook somewhere where this lady was all upset. She had an electric stove and she was gonna rip it out and put in a gas stove. It was gonna be thousands of dollars, but by golly, she was gonna have her gas stove. There's personal preference in this, and certainly that exists in, in everything in life and, and for trimming dales, dog's nails as well. I bring this up to talk about dremeling. Dremeling is a great technique. It's using a high speed rotary tool to, to take down the dog's nails length and round the nails. I love dremeling. I think it's perfectly appropriate. It's not my medium, however. So, you know, dremeling may be the, the acrylics of the world and I'm over here in watercolors. This is my tool of choice because it's simple, inexpensive. I can carry it with me in my purse. Um, doesn't require, you know, any electricity or batteries. Ideally with dremeling, because the dust that's created, you would wear a mask. And because it's a high speed rotary tool, you need to be careful not to get your hair or your dog's long fur entangled in it. As I said, it is a fantastic technique. Please don't send me a lot of um, uh, mail from the dremelers of the world. Um, I respect you and love dremeling. And honestly, if you need to get your dog's nails really short, if they're very, very long and you're in the process of trying to get the quick to reseed, the only way to practically do that, really the best way, is to dremel very frequently, like every other day. So there is my my dremeling pitch. Love dremeling, but it's not my my just not my favorite technique. I'm the electric stove user. You might be the gas stove user. So this is what I'm teaching because it works for me. In my 20 year veterinary career, I've taught lots of technicians this technique, and we've had a ton of patients go home that had came in with very long nails and go home with very short, beautiful nails and taught the clients how to do that as well. And there's great joy in that. So our conclusion, you're going to repeat these steps for all 16 nails and do claws if applicable. And your yield, you know, at the end they say like yield 24 brownies. Well, you're going to have a dog with instantly improved posture and gait. If this topic gets you going, I have great news. We've recently spent many, many hours trimming nails on dogs of all different shapes and sizes. We filmed a video on how to trim a puppy's nails, a black dog's nails, a big dog's nails, a tiny dog's nails, and everything in between. And we're rolling out a tutorial video series in the near future and a dog petty kit that includes my favorite nail trimmer. If you would like to be notified of the launch of this product um, and informational material, I want you to text toenails, yes, that's right, all one word, toenails, to 44222. That's toenails to 44222, just text that. And that'll put you in the loop. We'll keep you in the loop and, and let you know on our, on our launch and you'll get pre-launch information and discounts. Our mission is to help people help their dogs. And as I said, over my veterinary career, I, I've trimmed a lot of dogs' nails and I think it's the best bang for the buck for, for a client because instantly I can help that dog feel better and move better in like five minutes and for a very low cost. So teaching people how to trim their dog's nails confidently, safely, and successfully 
has been one of my favorite parts of fulfilling that mission, helping people help their dogs. They say if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. I, I'm happy to trim my clients, um, my patients' toenails, but I'm much happier to transfer the passion and have a client walk away and say, I get it, I'm on it. You know, this is, I understand why this is so important and I now have the tools to make this happen at home. Like, honestly, that's my, one of my greatest joys. All right, get trimming.